All right, so now I'm going to start going over uh, some of the different types of hybridization. And before I do that, uh, I'd like to mention just a little bit more on hybridization that I did not cover in the last video. And uh, one thing about hybridization that is important is that it usually costs energy. So it's not a free deal. So so remember, when you, when you take a... Hybridization is basically just combinations of standard atomic orbitals, so the S's, the P's, and so forth. And when you take those S and P orbitals, for instance, and you combine them, those S and P orbitals already are uh, symmetric about the nucleus, and when you combine them to form hybrid orbitals, hybrid orbitals are asymmetric about the nucleus, and that's usually not a good uh, scenario energetically. Uh, usually the uh, lowest energy or happiest uh, situation is when that charge or that electron density is distributed uh, more evenly. So this explains why individual atoms by themselves don't hybridize. Now, um, in situations where hybridization is a valid model, uh, that energy, uh, that that energy cost associated with uh, forming these asymmetric hybrid orbitals is usually regained or bought back when that atom forms more bonds. So as a result, central atoms tend to hybridize while terminal atoms tend not to hybridize. So uh, one of the most common central atoms uh, that, that hybridizes uh, virtually all the time is carbon. So, so atoms like carbon, uh, oxygen is another one, nitrogen is another one. Uh, these atoms uh, tend to hybridize quite often because they tend to form, they tend to be central atoms, they tend to form uh, multiple bonds, two or more. Uh, by contrast, terminal atoms such as uh, hydrogen, you know, the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, etc. So atoms that are, are terminal, they, don't, they only form uh, one bond, so these are all monovalent they tend not to hybridize. So their electrons are best described in terms of occupying standard atomic orbitals rather than hybrid orbitals. So the first, uh, the first type of hybridization that I'd like to get into is the sp3 or sp cubed hybridization. And this hybridization is achieved by combining the, an s orbital. Remember there's only one s orbital in, in uh, any electron shell. SP3 hybridization is, is achieved by combining one s orbital with all three of the p orbitals. So we have one s orbital, and we have three p orbitals, and the one s orbital gets combined with all three of them uh, to result in the formation of four energetically equivalent sp3 hybrid orbitals. Okay, so all of these orbitals are energetically equivalent. They're all asymmetric about the nucleus, but they're all uh, both structurally and energetically equivalent. They all have the same shape. Uh, the only difference between them is they just simply point in different directions. So uh, four sp3 hybridized orbitals. Uh, each of these orbitals, like I said, they're energetically equivalent. Uh, each of them has 25% s character and 75% p character. So because one s orbital out of all four of the orbitals that are uh, that are combined together because only one out of those four is an s orbital that corresponds to 25 percent s so three out of the four are p and that's why uh, it is considered a 75 percent p character so uh, notice also that the total number of orbitals is the same. So the total number of hybrid orbitals that is formed matches the total number of standard atomic orbitals that went to make those hybrid orbitals. That will always be true. Okay. So uh, these sp3 hybrid orbitals, they actually, it turns out that they are actually 109.5 degrees apart from one another. So this is, is very, very similar to what we saw in Vesper theory, uh, which predicts a, a bond angle of 109.5 degrees between uh, between four uh, equivalent uh, repulsive electron groups. Uh, so although sp3 hybridization tends to uh, agree strongly with the Vesper model, it's not exactly the same model. This is more uh, centered on 
on the mathematical combination of the or of the orbitals. Vesper theory is more is a more theoretical concept that just you know deals with these uh, equivalent groups repelling one another. So this is kind of a poor drawing. This this shows the uh, sp3 orbitals uh, separately. Uh, so a good picture of the sp3 orbitals might be uh, you know to show them all together. So. In the videos that follow, I'm going to uh, I'm going to choose carbon as my central atom, and uh, the reason why is because carbon uh, hybridizes a lot, and hybrid, uh, carbon tends to assume many different types of hybridization, so it's easy to use carbon uh, as an example of the various types of hybridization. So. Remember, uh, in either the last video or the, or the video before it, or both, I started talking about the fact that when we apply standard overlap of a, uh, excuse me, overlap of standard atomic orbitals, that that's really not in keeping with what's going on with uh, methane CH4, the compound that is composed only of carbon and hydrogen. So it turns out that hybridization or sp3 hybridization turns out to be a very very good model uh, when describing the bonding and electronic behavior of methane ch4 so not only not only do not only is the formula in agreement the ch4 but the bond angle of 109.5 degrees is also uh, is also relevant as well so uh, basically what we have here is we have these four sp3 orbitals right and then each of those sp3 orbitals overlaps with a 1s orbital of hydrogen. So the sp3 orbitals are shown in green and the s orbitals of hydrogen are shown in blue. Now I should point out that uh, for the sake of not being able to draw these pictures very well, I've, I have excluded the back lobes of these orbitals. So it's not just one lobe here, okay? These green orbitals actually, they really do have a back lobe to them, although it's, it's not shown, okay? So uh, that is uh, sp3 hybridization uh, in a nutshell. Um, there are other uh, molecules other than methane uh, in which sp3 hybridization is also a good, uh, a good model to describe the bonding. Uh, case in point, ammonia start talking about ammonia, NH3. And remember, if you draw the Lewis structure for ammonia, you, you find that there's a lone pair on that central nitrogen atom. And if you apply uh, the concept of orbital hybridization to ammonia, you can you can pretty much do the same thing that you did with methane that you have uh, four sp3 hybrid orbitals the only difference is three of those sp3 hybrids are going to in, uh, in involve uh, overlap with a 1s orbital of hydrogen and uh, one of the the remaining sp3 hybrid orbital is going to accommodate the lone pair okay so if i have an sp3 hybridized nitrogen atom it's going to look something like this So imagine this is a uh, tetrahedron. So one of the hydrogens will go here, one here, one here, and there are two electrons involved in each bond. And then the remaining two electrons are going to exist as a lone pair in the remaining sp3 orbital. So um, this, the sp3 hybrid orbitals when applied to ammonia is, is, is a little bit more of an approximation uh, than when we applied it to methane. Um, and by that I mean that the presence of this lone pair does tend to distort the hybridization a little bit. Uh, because of the presence of that lone pair, which tends to uh, repel those uh, electron groups a lot more, it tends to sort of close the umbrellas is, 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 uh, is how I like to look at it. Because that is happening, that also affects the hybridization of the orbitals. And I'll, I'll get into uh, the relationship between uh, orbital hybridization and uh, S and P character and stuff like that in another video. But for now, uh, just realize that the, the presence of that lone pair 
does uh, make the bond angle between the two hydrogen atoms of ammonia um, it makes that a little bit a little bit shorter uh, than the tetrahedral value of 109.5 degrees so the bond angle is actually 170 excuse me not 170 107 uh, degrees and that affects the hybridization as well so these orbitals are actually uh, closer to the p they, they have a little bit more p character than the sp3 hybrids do so the sp3 hybrids remember they have 75 percent p character and it turns out that these hybrid orbitals in ammonia are going to uh, resemble the p orbitals just a little bit more uh, than than the uh, hybrid orbitals of methane of the carbon in methane so i hope this video was helpful um in the coming videos i will start discussing uh, some of the uh, other different types of hybridizations. I'm going to talk about uh, different types of bonds uh, that are predicted by uh, valence bond theory. And uh, so stay tuned for that. And uh, as always, uh, good luck.